Hi, my name is Dr. Ken Deck. I have been a general and vascular surgeon here in Laguna Hills since 1980 and am presently the medical director for Alliance Research Centers. At Alliance Research Centers, we carefully select and conduct clinical trials to help find new treatments for diseases such as those you see on your screen. If you're interested in learning more about participation in clinical trials, please visit our website at www.researchalliance.com or give us a call at 949-680-3490. Welcome back. Right now with us, we have Dr. Ken Deck, and he is with Alliance Research Centers. Nice to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you, it's sir. It's a pleasure. Uh, uh, Alliance Research Centers. Got some slides that we're going to uh, show in just a moment. But first, we're going to talk about clinical research in general. Of course, whether it's drug trials or maybe mm -hmm. a new surgical procedure, whatever it may be. It has to go under testing, trial testing, research, and that sort of thing because before it's approved by the FDA, right? That's, that's correct. Any new drug or new device is looked at very closely by the FDA. Mm -hmm. A pharma company, for example, does clinical research with animals or bench right. research, yeah. and then they find a drug that they think has some promise. Mm -hmm. They then take that drug to the FDA, and they go through a whole series of trials looking to see if it's safe, and if it's also, also efficacious, meaning does it do what it's supposed to do? Okay. Uh, and is the side effect profile such that it's worth uh, progressing with the drug? And eventually, if the drug finally makes it through all those trials and gets approved, then it's available to the mm -hmm. public. Okay, and that can take some time, right? It I takes mean, years it, and years. Yeah. yeah, I mean, from start to finish. Yes, yes. And can, that's, uh, I mean, one of the advantages of being in a clinical trial is you get the drug way before it's going to be available to the general public. Right. And so what you folks do, at least from what I'm understanding here, because um, we, we have a couple slides. One shows where your, your center is, uh, not far from here. And um, right there, very close by, by yeah. uh, just down the street, basically. Yes, right next to the Sonnenbach Hospital. And then the next slide, studies that you are currently enrolling in. Now, I mentioned at the top of the news, I know Alzheimer's is one of the uh, yes. ones you folks really look into, but there's all sorts of different studies that you're doing. So my question to you is, I know that certain drug companies do these on their own or uh, maybe hospitals and things like that. Are you a center that uh, these different companies can come to and facilitate these different trials all at one location. Is that basically yeah. what it what is? What happens is a drug company gets final approval to, right. to, to look into doing either a phase two or mm -hmm. phase three trial and they will come to us. We get uh, probably trials every day that we're asked if we want to participate in. Okay, all right. Uh, I would turn down probably two-thirds of the trials mm -hmm. because if I can't tell you this is something I would do, then yeah. that's not fair. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not going to promote you into a trial that, that I wouldn't do myself or I have, wouldn't have for my family. But they come to us and they say, okay, here's the trial. Are you interested in doing it? And then we either accept or reject that and then begin the trial. And it's, there's lots of different areas, as you could see from the previous slide, of the trials that we do. Yeah, it's very interesting. The first phase is... Um, uh, you go through these healthy human sure, subjects sure. and things. When a drug is, goes to the FDA, they first start with what's called a phase one trial. Okay. Phase one trial takes somewhere between 40 and 50 volunteers. Those volunteers are normal health, healthy subjects and they give them the drug, mostly looking at the side effects of the drug to see if it's safe, to see if there's, what are the side effects, how okay. significant are they. If it passes the phase one trial, it goes to a phase two trial, mm -hmm. in which now they're looking at maybe 80 to 100 patients who actually have the disease process. Say a person has high cholesterol right. and a drug we just finished trialing to see, number one, also looking at the side effects in the group of patients who would be taking it, but also is it efficacious? Does it lower the cholesterol right. as good or better than what's presently out there? Okay, that's a good yeah. point you just made. Yeah. There, all trials have what's called a placebo arm or a standard of care arm, so you're comparing the new drug to what's available out there right now. Okay. And so then if that passes that particular phase, it goes into a phase three trial, which is maybe thousands of patients, now looking particularly to make sure that it is efficacious. 
once it passes the phase three and goes to the FDA, if that research <laughs> is supportive of the drug, <laughs> only then is it actually uh, introduced into the public. Okay, but how long, I, I know this can probably vary, from phase one to phase four, on average, would it be a year? Oh no, mo be much more, <coughs> probably two really? or three years. Wow, and this that. is after the years it took to develop Absolutely. whatever the drug procedure, Absolutely. Or whatever it may be. Absolutely. Wow. Uh, I always find that uh, interesting that you know you see those ads on TV that sometimes there's there's a drug you've heard about for years and years and years uh, like Humira yeah. and I'm not promoting that or I, but all of a sudden it's being promoted for a totally different thing because I guess they found out yeah. during trials yes. that hey this not only helps with this but guess what? It's Absolutely. helping with this Absolutely. as well. And that's what a phase four trial is. You're taking a drug that's already been FDA approved, say the cholesterol drug. Yeah. And you know it works for cholesterol, but they find that, man, it kind of helps men with their prostate symptoms. Mm -hmm. So then they do a phase four trial with the already approved drug, looking at a different indication. Yeah. Uh, and so saying, gee, maybe this, we found that men with, don't get up near as much as night to urinate with this drug. So now they look at that as well. Interesting. Yeah. 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 I, I always find how they, they seem to find other ways. Yeah. <laughs> now, as far as people uh, benefiting from participating in mm -hmm. these trials, I guess the first question is, how would they go about it if they feel, we, we saw on your slide, I mean, all the different things that uh, uh, you're currently enrolling studies in, um, mus muscular uh, sclerosis, women's health, artery disease, type 2 diabetes, kidney disease, gallbladder, prostate. If when if someone feels that maybe they have mm -hmm. some of these symptoms, they've already gone to their primary care doctor, maybe they're on a certain medication, and they think they could be a part of this, they could, of course, give you folks a call. Sure. But then you have to see if they qualify. You're not just going to take anybody <laughs> on their word, yes. right? Yeah. yeah. What, so how does what, that work? The way that it works is a lot of times we get a lot of patients referred by physicians in the local okay. community. Okay. All right. Uh, patients sometimes go on our website and look and see if, if they have any diseases that mm -hmm. we're doing research on and that's constantly changing. I would tell your audience right. to kind of look at that every couple months because some trials close, new trials open. Yeah. Then we meet with them. Mm -hmm. uh, we get their medical records from their physicians to see if they qualify for a specific trial. If they have the disease entity that we're looking, the trial is looking mm -hmm. for. Uh, and then uh, if they do, we meet with them, consent them, uh, and go forward. Okay, now one of the questions I'm sure they would have, you would have, I have, suppose they're on a, well, say so they have diabetes or something, they're already on a specific medication mm -hmm. for that, and you happen to be testing another new medication. Do they have to go off their current one? How no, do you, no. how do you proceed Usually with that? not, okay. usually not. Uh, for example, the people on the cholesterol trial stayed on right. their statins, for example, okay. uh, and this was in addition to that. So no, okay. they didn't have to go off their normal medications at all. That's rare that, that the Okay, and you that. can still tell that this new medication is having, is either have or having not a benefit. Oh, definitely. Okay. Definitely. All right. Now, I know quite often during these different trials and uh, research, people are compensated for this, uh, usually by the, the, the companies that would pass through you, of course. Is that usually true? To some extent, I think people ask, why should I enter a clinical trial? Mm -hmm. The main reasons, number one, are that you're going to be able to get a medication that you otherwise wouldn't get right. for maybe two, three, four years, mm -hmm. and obviously get the benefits of that. Right. The people that were in the cholesterol trial had markedly lower cholesterols for three years before that drug even became available. The second is more kind of altruistic. I think. If people wouldn't enter clinical trials, none of the population that you were talking to would be able to take any of their medicine. Yeah. None of them would be approved. Yeah. Uh, so it's only by entering clinical trials do we get new medications or new devices right. on the market. The, yes, patients are usually paid for their time and their travel. I tell patients, never enter a clinical trial for the money. That's, no, that's, you're not. It's just not mainly a, a stipend for your, yes. yeah, yes. exactly. One quick question, we have just a minute left. Let's say, like the cholesterol drug, they take that for three years and then it finally gets approved. Are they taken off that drug or are they kind of like got to now go through um, Medicare or whatever it may be to now be Once, able to get that drug that's been helping them? 
It depends on the company. Okay. Some of the companies will continue to give them the okay. drug because All they right. were in the trial. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people, a lot of the companies will, continue, will give the people who were in the placebo or the standard of care arm the drug for free because they were in the trial. Okay. Because that's, it, that helped them. Yeah. So usually they'll get the drug con even after it's been approved uh, for some period of time for free. All right, very good. That's a good thing to know. Now, you folks who just saw, they're over by uh, Saddleback Hospital. The number is 949. 6803490 and uh, the website right there is is a research alliance Dot com. So you have to reserve, reverse their title there, researchalliance.com. That is their website for Alliance Research Centers. Doctor, a pleasure oh, to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. Yeah, take Hope care. Hope to see you again. And folks, go online. Maybe you'll find a, a trial out there that could benefit you. We'll be right back. Thank you.